my teaching, my conduct, my aim of life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecution, my sufferings, what befell me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystia, what precautions I endured from them all, the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted, while evil men and impostors will go forth from bad to worse. Deceivers and deceived, but as for you, continue in what you have learned, what you have firmly believed, knowing what you have learned, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to instruct you in salvation in the faith of Christ Jesus.
may the Lord God remember to his kingdom, always, now, and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Charles Badger, Travis Hawk, Daniel, Felix, Mark, Michael, Alex, Louise, Andrew, Kevin, Jamie, Jason, Nathan, Eric, Dougie, Isaac, Gloria, Michael, Paul, Hilden, Kyle, Nicola, Jariam, Hala, Madhu, Justine, Edwin, Elias, Ba'a, Ula, Anthony, Johnny, Andrew, Leanne, Amal, Olga, Michael, Eric, Constantine, Adesda, Victor, Alexei, Nikolai, Tatiana, John, Green, Curtis, Mom, Augustine, Caesar, Suzanne, Justine, Javier, Lily, Tatiana, Augustus, Janice, Rubina, Chris, Lulu, Rose, Lorraine, Mirna, Alex, Jean, Vicky, Kim, Eli, Jessica, Samantha, Chris, Daniel, Gabby, Merchant, Mary, Isabel, Julia, Edwin, Cheyenne, Mary, Bill, Teresa, Rebecca, Lily, Ward, Rachel, Sharon, Kay, Monique, Marie, Antoinette, Jacob, Anastasia, Clinton, Alexander, Lucas, George, Ronnie, Susan, Ruthann, Lenora, Len, Larry, Vesna, Marina, Ala, Lindy, Marcus, Alexandra, Alexander, Anina, Andre, Evgeny, Judy, Marshall, Audrey, Andrew, April, Amagene, Antonella, Alex, Arthur, Josephine, Rachel, Rosaria, Magdalena, all of you who have mourned Syria and the homeless community, and all our faithful St. George of the Church, may the Lord God remember them in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Isabella Maria, Thomas Sr., Bob, Arthur, Rita, Mary, Tony, Regina, Artem, Zuki, Yorgi, Marie, Kassantin, Vladimir, Flavia, Nona, Maria, Nadezhda, Galina, Donald, Dorothy, Candy, Lyons, Jihad, Nazir, Zina, Elias, Georgette, Zahra, Selwa, Shaheen, Tony, John, Virginia, Paul, Marcel, Bella, Saab, Lorraine, Hilda, Kenya, Cross, Anastasia, Daisy, Nadim, Hind, Randy, Vladimir, Olympia, Mama, Alice, Edgar, Douglas, and all the bottom of St. George Orthodox Church. May the Lord God remember the mystery of all ways now and ever, and unto the age of
I will know the Lord my strength. The Lord is my firm foundation, my rescue is my deliverance. I will know the Lord my strength, Lord my firm foundation, my refuge and my deliverance. I will know the Lord my strength, the Lord is my firm foundation, my refuge and my deliverance.
Like the people like the Pharisees. Remember me, O Lord, like you. Not to judge us, not to condemnation, be my voice, take the holy mercy of the Lord. For the healing of souls. The gold of joy and glory to me, and praise the Lord, and I will take the Lord. Without a fire, I can soon be born. Can't be there for all my sins. Merciful Lord, Jesus, my God. Let nothing be used against my condemnation and cause my confidence. I'd rather be a man against the nation of fire and souls. We pledge the life of King and the God. We pledge the need to plead to God. Praise the hope of my salvation.
prepared Orthodox Christian, we ask that you please come forward with your arms folded across your chest to receive Holy Communion. All other Christians are invited to come forward with their hands together to venerate the chalice and receive less bread. As a reminder, we turn to our neighbor behind us. We ask for their forgiveness as we would Jesus. Thank you. With the fear of love, with the
like to see when I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. O Lord, save thy people and bless
love is second only to God. Second only to God. So when our mother leaves this world, there is a hole in us. And the only thing that can fill that hole or hope to fill that hole is the love of God, who is greater than the love of God. But Isabella Maria chose towards the end of her life to do something worthwhile with her life. More than just taking care of her son and her grandchildren. Dedicated her life to the last years of serving God. And she was signed to as a monastic. We in this community over 40 years have looked for a monasticism. Monasticism is the epitome of the spiritual life of Christ and not all of the world. But if there are any, and I believe there are some women or men in our community that have done what they're supposed to do in life, and now they're just in what we call retirement. I mean, really nothing much with their lives except going through the faces. I call them to copy the example of Mother Isabella Maria and dedicate their lives to a monastic, prayerful life in the world. And you can see by the results of her son how much that prayer has been done. This time I'm going to ask that you to keep this in mind as you participate in a love offering for this church. If you are noticing the things, you will notice that many improvements have been going on in the church. Hold on. Many improvements have been going on in the church. We're building, we're doing, we're improving. All these things take effort and they also take funds to buy the necessary material. One of the biggest items we budget every month for home people. So we ask you to participate in love all of them because we want to repair, fix up, and improve the temple of the world. After this offering is taken up by my friend Arctic, we will ask you to please start with the regular post of the prayers of Christ. Please stand for the post-communion prayer. <clears throat> glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O God. I thank thee, O Lord my God, that thou hast not rejected me a sinner, but has accounted me worthy to become a communicant of the holy mysteries. I thank thee that thou hast accounted me the unworthy, worthy to partake of thine immaculate and heavenly gifts. But, O Master, who lovest mankind, who did both die for us and rise again, and did so upon us these life terrible and life giving mysteries for the benefiting and sanctification of our souls and bodies, grant that they may be for me also unto the healing of soul and body, unto the averting of everything contrary thereto unto the enlightenment of the eyes of my heart, unto the peace of my spiritual powers, unto faith invincible, unto love unfeigned, unto fulfilling of wisdom, unto the keeping of thy commandments, unto growth of thy divine grace, and the attainment of thy kingdom, that by them preserved in thy holiness, I may ever remember thy grace, and henceforth live not unto myself, but unto thee, our master and benefactor. And thus, when this life is ended in the hope of eternal life, I may attain unto everlasting rest, where the voice of those who keep festivals unceasing, and the delight of those who behold the inevitable.
ineffable beauty of thy countenance is boundless. For thou art the true desire and the unutterable joy of those who love thee. O Christ our God, and all creation him thee forever. Amen. May thy holy body, O Lord Jesus Christ our God, be unto me for life eternal, and thy precious blood unto remission of my sins. May this Eucharist be unto me for joy, health, and gladness, and at thy dread second coming, make me a sinner worthy to stand at the right hand of thy glory through the intercessions of thine all immaculate mother and of all thy saints. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O Christ, O God, and our hope. Glory to thee. Amen. Sunday of the public and the Pharisee, I ask the Lord that you give me the words that you want imparted to your faithful people, that we might live our lives not only according to your will, but according to your love. Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. In the Gospel of our Lord that was proclaimed by the Holy Evangelist St. Luke, the 18th chapter, which is on page 908 if you want to follow along in one of the Bibles, the 11th verse reads, The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. Amal Pharisiyu wa yusalli fi nefsi ri haqqaza, Allahumma ana ashkuruka enni lestu misla baki al nasi al khatifina al zalimina al zunati wa la misla haza al ashar. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The study Bible tells us the Pharisee prayed thus with himself and not to God. I remember years ago when they didn't used to keep the TV on all night. So when they would sign on in the morning about 6 o'clock, I remember that uh, the CBS affiliate had opening prayer. And I remember that you know they, they would ask different clergy to do, you do seven, you tape seven, because we weren't going to be there that early in the morning. And there was one fellow that would, he would say the prayer and start talking right away. And he said it very, very loudly. And I'm sure that sometimes you've been to churches where the clergy pray very loud so that everybody hears them. What are they praying to God or are they praying to themselves? Are they praying to God or are they praying to be heard by other people? I've been asked a number of times, why does the liturgy take longer at St. George? Today I was uh, very happy to see a boyhood friend of mine from Brooklyn, Alex Curry, in the house. He came up to receive absolution. I said, you look familiar to me. He said, I'm Alex Curry from St. Mary's. Well, we have St. Mary's Church in West Palm Beach. I said, from West Palm Beach? He said, no, Brooklyn. Your mother taught me. I said, oh my God. Okay. So Alex, do you still live in Brooklyn? Thank God. <laughs> it's too expensive to live in Brooklyn. <laughs> Anyhow, <coughs> I'm sure that Alex might have said, this is a lot longer. I mean, how long is this going to go on? One of the statements that we say in the Divine Liturgy after the Great Entry, we say, let us complete our prayer to the Lord. And those who are not Orthodox, they go, okay, we're almost done. And we go on. Because we're talking to God. We cannot hurry this up. We must be thinking of what we are saying. I've told you a number of times, I know I did last week, that when we say, let us give thanks unto the Lord, we should be thinking of something that we're thankful for. I thought of something that I was thankful for. It's an opportunity 
to show thanks and appreciation to God. So quite often we, we, we act, people act very holy or very self-righteous. It saddens me. It's not a political statement. Not a political statement. Don't don't be all oh, about this. It saddened me that somebody this week on national news uh, made a decision based on their conviction based on an oath that they took. We should applaud something like that. Whether we agree with it or not, we should applaud at least that they took a decision based on an oath that they took. But rather, we see so many people being condemned. And there's a reason for this. There's a reason why we attack other people. There are some people that come to church and they look on other people in a negative or in a, a, a wrongful manner and there's a reason for that it's because too many people talk the talk and don't walk the walk too many people just on Friday I came for the vestry service there was a homeless man who obviously was extremely upset and if you know anything about the homeless they basically what they own is what they can they don't have a lot of some place to put it and all of this man's things were stolen. And he was so angry. And he was walking down from the parking lot down the street and he was using the most famous, the second most famous English word in the world. And it's not hello. I mean, he, all the way down the street, and then he came back again for, you know, for, for a second course. And there was a lady from Greece and her son and. I don't know if they were coming to church, but they just came in because the door was open and they were looking for some security. I said to the man who's very upset, he lost everything. But you see, if you don't experience that, if you don't know what it's like to lose everything, you would just condemn this person. So a lot of people, when they pray, they're judging other people. We find it in the church. Maybe not in this parish. Oh, look what time they came. Oh, now they come? I was on time. What is this? I'm happy they come. Do you think that a mother whose child, for example, my daughter Alexandra, lives in New York? God willing, she's coming to Florida this week. And if she tells me I'm going to be there, Daddy, at 10 and comes at 10.30, do you think I'm going to chastise her for being a half an hour late? I'd be so happy to see my daughter. So we sit and we judge other people and we are so wrong to do this. For the simple reason that if not for the grace of God, you would be doing the same thing that you're accusing someone else of. So this Pharisee here, and the Pharisees, you know, this was a sect of the Jews that were very self-righteous. They knew all the law. We find that quite often in American Christianity. People that know every verse of the Bible, they know the numbers, they know where it's at. It's been a long time, but sometimes I used to be asked, you know what Luke 4, 7 says? I'd say something similar to Luke 4, 6 and connected to Luke 4, 8. I remember my children uh, were in a uh, private school, which they were in a private school because believe it or not, you'll, you'll find this interesting. How I got them into the private school without paying them anything was I would teach children how to enunciate Spanish. It's true. They had, I, 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 I forgot how to speak it, but I now had to enunciate it. And I went inside and I the father, uh, please don't kill me if I made mistakes, okay? But that's the first time that I've done it. But the point that I'm bringing out is that one of the teachers said to me one time, she says, I've never known a pastor's children that didn't know all the books of the Bible as they are, you know, from the Old Testament and New Testament. I said, well, now you do. You could take that off your bucket list because now you've met one. I did not learn the Bible like a textbook. And there are people that use it like a textbook. And quite often they use it to attack other people. Oh, you're doing it. We, we shouldn't go so far away from the church because Lent's coming up. Oh, you're not supposed to be eating this. You're not supposed to be taking that. You're supposed to be drinking this. Oh my God. Are they missing the point of Lent? If I can quote my friend Janice Belfield. Lent and fasting is not a diet. It's not a diet. 
There are some people that have to eat some of the things for medical or physical reasons. All they need to do is tell, they're supposed to tell the priest, because the priest is the guardian of the chalice. You just don't go do it on yourself. I'm not going to try to be nosy in your life. But what I'm saying is, we have people that are very fair to say it. Oh, you shouldn't be eating this, you shouldn't be doing that. Oh, you shouldn't go there, you shouldn't go here, whatever it might be. So until we walk where others have walked, we will have no empathy for people. And if we have no empathy, then we become like the Pharisee. It goes on, he says in verse 13, and the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You know, the word for tax collector in Arabic is Asharu, which comes from the Arabic word for ten, Ashara. Tax collectors were supposed to collect a tenth of what people had. Tax season is coming up. How many of you grumble when you see how much you have to pay when you write out your taxes? Be honest with you. How many of you grumble? Oh, come on. Alex, put a little higher up. We have, we have, much, we have a lot of denials in this room right now. I don't grumble. I mean, honestly, I don't grumble. And not because of crazy, because I think I'm getting something for the taxi. We have an army and we have roads. So I, I, don't, I don't grumble. But the reason people hated tax collectors is because they were thieves. They would say, okay, one shekel for the government, one shekel for me. Two shekels for the government, one, two shekels for me. Three shekels for the government, one, two, three shekels for me. They were stealing, and the people knew they were stealing. And when the government didn't have enough money, what did they do? They raised the taxes. So the people knew that the tax collectors were mostly thieves. So this tax collector comes in, he says, he wouldn't even come near. He didn't even go close to the altar. The Pharisees stood probably about right here. Because you couldn't go inside the Holy of Holies reserved. You couldn't go in there. The tax collector came right about right here. And the, I'm mean, sorry, the, the Pharisees, the tax collector is way back, probably around where Lake Neola is. Stood far off because he was afraid of God. Humility is such a blessing, and humility is not something that we exalt in our society. We don't. We are respectful and we are responsive to the braggers. How great they are, how much they've done, how much we should appreciate them. On, we are so overrun with bragging in our society that it's worse than it's ever been. Look at me. Look how wonderful I am. Look how strong I am. Look, look, look what I did. Look what I did. Look what I did. It sickens me. It sickens me for the sake of the person and the people's souls because they will stand before God and they'll say, Oh God, glory to you. And God will probably say, like, Now you say glory to me? You are always saying glory to yourself. Look what you've done. Look what you've accomplished. I was humbled this past week. I was at the funeral of our dear beloved uh, Eagle Mon James, Mon James, Brother Jim. And he had a partner in their ministry, his name was Frank. And after the funeral, Frank, who never really, I never thought Frank liked me at all. I haven't seen him in many, many years. He stopped me as I was leaving. He said, I want to thank you. I'm not going to get into it. It's something with Brother Jim. That so touched me. It so touched me. For someone to think that I actually did something that was benefit for somebody else. Humility is power. I remember the late Metropolitan Philip Gopas. So we have a priest, for those of you that know Father Moore up outside of Atlanta. He's a very humble man. And I remember Metropolitan Philip saying that he was always touched by his humility. Humility. How do, we, how do we not show humility? We dress very fancy, buy lots of jewelry. But worst of all, and, and just talking about dressing, I don't, I don't know, please, I don't understand this. 
I will tell somebody, well, that's a nice dress or jacket. You know what they always say? You know what they say? You know how much it cost? I didn't ask you how much it cost. I don't care if you got it from Walmart's bargain basement. It looks nice on you. That's why I didn't ask you the price. Do you remember? I don't know if anybody, anybody, I don't know if anybody buys new cars. I haven't bought a new car in, in 40 years. But remember years ago, maybe this is what I know. When you bought a car, there was a, uh, a price tag on the, or price paper on the window. You all remember that? I used to wonder why people, three months after they had the car, that was still on the window. Are you trying to tell me how much you paid for the car? I don't care what you paid for the car. Doesn't make a difference to me. The only time I even bring up price is when it's a great bargain. I don't know if my daughter Anastasia remembers, but I don't even know if they're in business anymore. There was a, a, a store years ago called Thriftco. Thriftco. And I used to buy all my clothes in Thriftco. So I went to Thriftco one day to see if they had any new suits. I used to wear suits a lot in those days. And they had a beige three-piece Givenchy, Givenchy suit for thirteen dollars. <laughs> I snapped that up so quickly, I can't believe it. And <coughs> with respect, without being unhumble, it looked very good on me. So I wore one day and somebody said, "Boy, Paul, that suit looks great on you." I said, "The best part of it is only cost me thirteen dollars." So someone said, "What do you have to tell them what it costs?" I said, "It makes the suit even better." that God gave me the suit for $13. So why is it that we do that? Because we want people to notice us. Humility is saying, don't notice me. Forget about me. Think about Jesus. Concentrate on Jesus. I'm not what's important. He is what is important. And finally, it says in verse 14, our Lord says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Surah Baal says, justified means forgiven and made right with God. Jesus reverses the expected conclusion in the eyes of God. It is a tax collector who is justified because of his humility. The Pharisee is condemned because of his self-righteousness and self-exaltation. The Pharisees are very plenteous. I warn you again, because today on our calendar we begin with called the Triodion. The Triodion is the last three Sundays, like three, in Iron Greek is three. The last three Sundays before we begin the Great Lent. Next Sunday is the Sunday of the Part of the Sun. The Sunday after is the Sunday of uh, the Last Judgment. And the third Sunday is the Sunday of Forgiveness. And then we begin the Lenten journey. When we enter into Lent, and anybody who feels like this, Lent's coming. Oh, oh no, Father. You sure? Someone says, someone says, oh, you're going to try to come to all the services? You'll be there for the Presanctified Liturgy twice a week? You'll be there for the Midday on Friday? You'll be there? Oh, no, I, uh, I meant to uh, try to follow the fast. I had a lady, Mayor Sobers, who was a very good Christian lady, said to me after the first week of Lent, she said, Father, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I said, what? What can't you do? She says, I can't. I, my doctor said I have to eat red meat. I said, what is your doctor's name? She said, why, you want to call up? I said, no, I want to make sure I never go to that doctor who's telling you that you need to eat red meat. So there are people that take Lent all the wrong way. Lent, as Father Alexander Schmemann wrote in his book, Lent is the spiritual springtime of the Orthodox Church. We are so blessed to have Lent. But if you're going to reduce Lent just down to a diet, you're going to miss all of the benefits of Lent. We need to learn humility. How do we learn humility? We learn humility by letting the other person go in front of us. We learn humility by feeling for the other person. We learn humility by realizing that God is the one who is great. 
There is one thing that the Muslims say that is correct. Allah Akbar. God is the greatest. And if you don't feel that in your heart, you have an opportunity during Lent to acquire it. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Absolution and 
confession. So we need to go to confession, and that's better held on Saturday. But you need to let me know. You need to let me know so we can apportion that time for you. Uh, after you have eaten something or had some coffee or papers or whatever downstairs, we're going to call you uh, to our discussion and teaching. Our teaching today is who is justified in the heart of God. In the heart of God. We need to grow more spiritually in Jesus Christ and that is what we are committed to. So please, please, don't leave. If you go out and do whatever you're going to do, there's no Super Bowl today. Whoever won the last who won the last Chiefs. Who? Chiefs. The Chiefs? Chiefs. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Your Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this blessing place in which you are. Blessed be the Jesus Christ, into our hearts, minds, souls, and bodies. Pray that you watch your